Well, you are joining us for a brand new themed week here on Property Tribes. We're calling it City Focus Week, and I'm delighted to be joined all this week by Paul Mahoney, who is a landlord investor and also MD of Nova Financial. And Paul, uh, you and I kind of came up with this little uh, themed week, and we thought it was a really good time uh, to, to have the week because we're coming out of lockdown. Um, recovery is is hopefully um you know gearing up and cities are going to play a very very important role in our economic recovery and to start off i just wanted to quote something from an excellent website called uh, center for cities um, and it says lessons from the 6000 year history of the city are clear they survive adapting to and overcoming the challenges of disease conflict and economic change. Uh, I'm sure you're in agreement with that, Paul. Absolutely. You know, we, we, our methodology is generally quite city focused. Um, and, and the main reason for that is that generally you will find that in city centres, that's where you have the most depth in the market. So some of the, the, the most of all of the fundamentals you want to have, things like employment, a range of industries, infrastructure, facilities, amenities, all the things that make people want to live in a location, you have the most of those things in cities. So, you know, there was some, some you know, a little bit negative media around COVID making people move away from cities. But you know, it's very interesting to see now that that's kind of flipping around a little bit. And there's certainly been a return to, to the norm. No, I agree. And we, we did identify this, this mini trend previously when we spoke about cities. And, and it can only be a mini trend. It's far too early to say whether it's going to really gain any hold. But as you say, there are already signs that people are returning to the cities. Um, and it, it's because I think cities are very, very resilient. And previously they have been seen to bounce back very quickly after some kind of economic shock and hopefully it will be the same um post covid yeah absolutely you know bounce back but also even be sustainable through economic shock you know we've only got to look at the last financial crisis to see that jobs often dried up in smaller cities and towns um but where there were still jobs were the bigger cities and towns and i've heard so many examples of that where, where people have ha actually had to move from smaller areas where their business or you know, whoever they're working for went bust or scaled back uh, and, and they had to go to where the jobs were, which, which you know, in general is, is major cities. That's where you have the, the biggest employment hubs. So, so yeah, that, that, that's why we like those locations because they tend to be the most sustainable. Um, obviously, COVID's a bit of a funny one in that we've, we've not really had a situation like this in our lifetimes before, um, but but it's interesting to see that now things are somewhat returning to the norm. That 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 has flown flowed through to to you know the livability of cities again. Yeah, and I think you know the the proportion of people working from home has probably been overstated uh, in the media. Uh, certainly, signs that that has been the case recently. Um, we are going to continue to need cities, as you say, they are economic powerhouses, but most importantly, they're places where people can collaborate and grow and, and network, um, and that, that's not going to change. Absolutely. You know, I, I think we can all agree that one thing we've taken from COVID and working from home, you know, like, for example, a lot of people have really enjoyed spending some more time with their family and all that sort of stuff. But, but everyone wants to be social again, you know. Everyone's kind of just in social mode at the moment in the UK, it seems, um, because we've been, we, it hasn't been a possibility for so long. Um, and that's not just social social, that's business social as well. Unless someone like myself, you know, I, I don't work and then, and then go off and have my social life. The, the two are one. Mm -hmm. um, so, 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 yeah, you know, having face-to-face -face meetings, yeah, you know, is, is something that, that I've certainly missed. And I think a lot of people have missed, you know, to going to trade shows face to face, all the things that we probably took for granted um, before COVID, everyone can't wait to do again. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's certainly contributing to the to the revitalization of cities because because that's where it happens. Absolutely. I mean, cities that they're about trade, they're about learning, they're about entertainment, they're about culture. Um, they have 
you know, a resident population, they attract visitors. And, and these are all good news uh, for landlords, whether you're looking to just do your standard buy to let or perhaps some kind of short term to com- short term accommodation or, or holiday mm-hmm. lets. Cities give landlords actually a lot of choice, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you know, we're involved in pretty well all aspects of property investment from, you know, standard buy to let through to short term let development, all that sort of stuff. And in general, you're right, cities just give you more options. Um, And usually the further you go away from a major city, the slightly less and less options you have and the slightly less and less reasons there are for people to live there. I think something that's understated, certainly in the mainstream media, is that jobs or employment isn't the only reason that people want to live in or around cities. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I'm talking to you from Australia right now, but generally I live in Zone 2 London and um, I don't just live there because it's 10 to 15 minutes to the, to the city. Uh, you know, I live there because you've got all the nice things on your doorstep. You've got, you know, um, bars, restaurants, cafes, gyms, all the things that make a place nice to live. You have those things in abundance close to central locations, whereas, again, the further you go out, the less and less of that you have. Indeed. And the the three cities where Nova and their clients have have a footprint are Birmingham, uh, Manchester and Liverpool. And Mm. we know that the demographic of these cities um, is is young. Uh, And I think, you know, a lot of young people, they head to cities to make their name um, and to make their fortune. If you're out in the sticks somewhere and you want to be a leading light in, in some area of business or the arts or whatever it may be, you, you are going to have to go into a scene within a city, I think. Yeah, absolutely. No, don't get us wrong. Our headquarters is in London and we love London, but but it's just increasingly difficult to justify property investment in London because the prices are so high and the yields are so low. Mm. So if you're a passive investor, there's not a lot of good opportunities in London. Um, that's, you know, that's been for the past, you know, seven to 10 years, I would say. Mm. Uh, and that's kind of what's driven us to those other cities. You know, they are, they are, um, major employment hubs in their own right. We have all of the Northern powerhouse schemes from the government, which are all about better utilising the Northern cities um, because, you know, unfortunately, historically, everything's been so London focused in the UK Um, and productivity in London is great. Productivity outside of London isn't so great in comparison to other countries. So they want to better utilise those cities. And, you know, certainly something we've seen is that, especially so Birmingham and Manchester, but Liverpool to a lesser extent, they are just such better cities than they were five to 10 years ago Mm. before now. And with all of the billions of pounds that are being spent, that's really, that has to continue. They are going to be even better in five to 10 years from now. So it's good that we can see a bit of a track record, but it'd be really interesting to see what happens over the coming decade um, and the positive things that are going to take place in those cities. Yeah, well, that, that kind of leads me nicely on to my next point. As, as we alluded to earlier, um, cities are going to play a, a pivotal role in uh, COVID recovery in terms of, of job creation and kind of, you know, firing up the economy again. Um, and, uh, you know, you mentioned it as well, the levelling up, that that was already on the government agenda prior to COVID. But I think yeah. post-COVID, we will see more of um, the government encouraging uh, economic activity in, in, you know, these other cities. Obviously, we've had the creation of the free ports recently as well for Birmingham. You know, we've got HS2, which is going to kind of link it to London and the rest of Europe, in fact. So the government's clearly got a commitment to, uh, you know, levelling up and making these um, cities, uh, as you know, equally as powerful and desirable to live in as London. And another thing that's driving each of those three cities massively is livability, um, especially for young professionals. As we know, young professionals are kind of the, the engine room of any city. They're the future. Um, and, and London, unfortunately, is very expensive. Um, and wages just do not match up to that, that cost of living. Uh, whereas those, those three cities that we've just mentioned, 
the, the, the cost of living is much better than London, substantially better than London, and the wages have risen substantially as well, especially for qualified young professionals. You know, they can earn a really good wage, pretty much the same as what they can expect in London, but the cost of living is a lot less. So that's resulting in the transient population in the UK very much moving toward the Midlands and the Northwest and away from London simply because of that fact. Yeah. So, you know, young professionals either moving there or staying there, whereas they may, whereas previously they probably would have come to London for the money. Indeed. And, you know, one of the other trends we were just talking about before the camera started rolling was that um, young people who, you know, two years ago were 18 and ready to leave home, they, they weren't able to because of the pandemic. So we've got... Yeah a whole raft of young people that are now um, going to be let loose and be able to, you know, move away from home and start making their way in life. Um, and they're undoubtedly going to be attracted to the cities for, for the reasons that we've given, because they have so much on the doorstep, entertainment, you know, cafes, restaurants. And I actually read today that um, availability of uh, home delivery of restaurant food is quite a determining factor now when people are choosing where to live and of course in cities yeah. you've got a whole raft of cafes bars and restaurants and delivery options um which is what the the kind of lifestyle is is dictating at the moment so i actually yeah. think paul you know now we've spoken about it cities are going to continue to have a, a lot going for them they are probably going to have to re reinvent them, themselves in some way they've done it in the past they'll do it again this time yeah, I, I think this is just another good example in history that proves that cities are resilient. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, if, if you read some of those articles I referred to talking about people leaving cities six to 12 months ago, there were some people doubting that. But, you know, as I kept saying to people, this is a very short term thing. And, and now that's being proven to not necessarily to, to, to be the case, that it is a short term thing and that cities are resilient. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's really interesting. Excellent. Well, throughout the rest of the week, uh, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the three main cities where Nova Financial and indeed Paul himself as an investor have a footprint. And as we mentioned, they are Birmingham. Uh, Manchester and Liverpool. So we do invite you to tune in tomorrow where we will be taking a closer look at all the really exciting things happening in the uh, city of Birmingham. Um, but we do want you to stay tuned throughout the week because we've got loads of really interesting facts to share with you. And also I'd like to uh, encourage everybody to look at uh, the threads that I've been creating where I've been documenting um, the COVID recovery in each of these three cities. And every time I hear some good news, Paul, I'm immediately updating those threads. And it's really good to see, you know, positive news coming in all the time. And, and that's what we're looking to share, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's, there's just so much of it, which is great. <laughs> you know, it, it really, it's, it's brilliant to, to see that, that, that there is so many positive things happening there. And that's really what we look for when it comes to identifying a, a good place to invest. Yeah. And, you know, from an investment point of view, uh, cities do tick a lot of boxes. And that, that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, um, because Birmingham is just one of those cities that exemplifies uh, boxes for investors um, and, and how, what they want to have ticked. So we'll be discussing that tomorrow. Um, but for today, thanks for joining us on this first instalment. And uh, Paul and I invite you to join us tomorrow when we're going to take that deep dive into uh, Birmingham and all the exciting things that are happening there.